can start. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this regular uh, meeting of the West Covina Planning Commission to order for April 11th, 2023. Um, we will now take a moment for silent prayer or meditation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Commissioner Williams. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right, Joanne, roll call, please. Commissioner Williams? Present. Commissioner Becerra? Here. Commissioner um, Gutierrez has an excused absence, and then Commissioner Hang is not here. And Chair Lewis? Present. All right. So we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mr. City Attorney, I believe I have to abstain from uh, the prior meeting and voting as to those minutes. Um, do we have an issue with a quorum if I abstain from 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 that? You're not actually required to abstain. Okay, all right. Well, I'll abstain anyway. <laughs> do we do we have any uh, any changes to the to the minutes for uh, either February 28th or March 28th? No. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as presented. Um, all right, moving on to oral communications. Would anyone like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, we will get straight into public hearings. Um, item two, conditional use permit number 23-02, administrative permit number 23-01, categorical exemption. Uh, Joanne, who will, who will present the staff report? Planning Assistant Jerry Rivera will be presenting the staff report tonight. Good evening, Commissioners. This is Conditional Use Permit Number 23-02 and Administrative Use Permit Number 23-01 for Tito's Pizza Bistro Brews, um, a restaurant. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow live entertainment within a defined area inside Tito's. The applicant is also requesting approval of an administrative use permit to apply for an ABC license, on-site sale of beer and wine, and to have outdoor dining. The location is zoned as heavy commercial. The location is on the southwest corner of South Azusa Avenue and Amar Road um, within the southwest side of the Island Plaza Shopping Center. And the surrounding zone uses are planned community development, service commercial, and neighborhood commercial. The overall lot size is 7.4 acres. The proposed business is called Tito's and is next to Tito's of Manila. The, uh, this is the site plan. The yellow color is the defined area that is for Tito's. The yellow rectangle indicates the space that will be used for live entertainment within Tito's. And this is the operations plan. Um, for the operation, the initial hours are of operation are 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. The restaurant will initially have 12 employees. For live entertainment, amplified sound will only, only indoors within 80 square feet area. Type of events, acoustic nights, bossa nova nights, hosted karaoke nights, stand-up comedy. And for the alcohol sales and outdoor dining, there will be on-site beer and wine sales. The restaurant would be obtaining a Type 41 ABC license. And for the outdoor furniture, it is required to be bolted to the ground or stored in building after business hours. Planning staff recommends adopting resolution number 22-6123, approving conditional use permit number 23-02, and resolution number 22-6124, approving 
Administrative Use Permit Number 23-01. The applicant and I are here if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for staff before we ask the applicant to come forward? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and request the applicant come forward. Um, I believe that is uh, Sharina Vergara, correct? Please come forward. Sure, if I may. Um, I just wanted to let the record show that Commissioner Hang is now present as of 7.03 p.m. Sorry. Very well. Please come forward. Okay. It's my first time. Good evening. I'm Trina Vergara, and I'm a small business owner in the city of West Covina. And um, I'm actually from the uh, San Fernando Valley, and we've had the restaurant for four years. It used, I mean, uh, our existing restaurant is Tita Sup Manila. It used to be another Filipino restaurant, which we acquired in 2019 pre-pandemic. And um, there was an opportunity for us to acquire the next restaurant, which was uh, Shakey's Pizza. It had been there for 20 years. And um, pandemic changed the way we do business. And uh, we wanted to offer live entertainment because Shakey's Pizza used to have the beer and wine um, in its place. We want to um, add um, enter live entertainment. Reason being is during the pandemic, I personally witnessed some or most people, they were really cooped up in their rooms. And the moment the uh, pandemic, um, the safe shelter at home uh, was lifted, everybody came out and just started dining out. And we kind of lost that connection. So the live entertainment will definitely bring um, that human connection back again. So that the reason it's not a loud entertainment, we just want a very uh, ambient music wherein we can still talk and enjoy a sumptuous meal, uh, celebrate milestones, and um, after a hard day's work, because we sit in right in the heart of supermarkets, um, uh, the big uh, the big box um, retailers, and some of those um, warehouses. So they need a space to really hang out, stay, just be themselves. And some of them, in our experience with our other restaurant, they would uh, celebrate birthday parties in the park, which is a great way to do. But I know West Covina has a lot of parks, but with a lot of population, there may not be enough, and especially if it's winter season, they're all cooped up inside their room. So the branding or the, um, the concept of this um, restaurant is just so a pizza. You know, everybody loves a pizza. Pizza and a, and a disappearing wine. And um, there's a party room wherein people can have quinceañeras or any whatever you have, um, 80s, 90s, whatever, birthday. So we will offer a space for them um, to hang and to celebrate, thus strengthening the diverse community of West Covina. And I'm seeking for your approval. Excuse me. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Um, the only question I have, did you have a chance to read the conditions? Of the... the conditions for the permit? I, have, uh, I just had to... I just received the mail, a letter. Right. And... What it is is that the resolution includes the conditions, mm -hmm. and I'm just asking if you had a chance to. I read hadn't. Them. Honestly, we've been so busy just occupying. Yeah. Um, I would read it, but I I haven't read it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Anyone else uh, in favor of this project who would like to speak? Seeing none, um, anyone opposed who would like to speak? Uh, anyone neutral? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we'll open commission discussion. Um, anyone have any questions or thoughts they'd like to share? Commissioner Hang? Okay, all right. Well, if, uh, if there's no discussion, um, I'll entertain a motion now. <clears throat> I will motion to approve conditional use permit number 23-02. I'll second the motion. 
All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Becerra, second by Commissioner Williams. Um, Joanne, you want to read the uh, resolution number, and then we'll go to a roll call. The resolution number is for 23-6124, and I'll go ahead and start the roll call. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Hang? Aye. Commissioner Becerra? Aye. Chair Lewis? Aye. Motion passes 401. This action is final unless appealed to the City Council within 10 days. All right, moving on to item number three, conditional use permit number 22-09. Joanne, who will present the staff report on this matter? Associate Planner Miriam Machado will be presenting the staff report. Good evening. Um, this is item number three, as you mentioned, for conditional use permit number 2209 for the property located at 2133 West Carby Avenue North. The conditional use permit being requested is to allow for the expansion of an existing church building located on that property. The current lot um, sits on the corner of West Carby Avenue North and North Willow Avenue, uh, north of the Interstate 10 freeway. The zone for the parcel is neighborhood commercial, and it's surrounded by single-family residential, residential agriculture, and neighborhood commercial. This is a photo from um, the existing site. This is the site plan for the property. The outline in purple here shows where the 4,298 uh, proposed square foot expansion would be. The lot itself has 37 parking spaces on site, which are shown here, um, and they would be using shared parking spaces with adjacent um, parcels. The staff report that you were provided initially indicated that the sanctuary would require 72 parking spaces, um, but after further calculation, it was determined that the sanctuary would require 75 parking spaces alone. Um, nonetheless, with the parking spaces on site and the parking spaces provided off site by the neighboring parcels, the church use would still meet the minimum number of parking spaces, spaces required. For their floor plan, this is just the expansion itself. Uh, the blue would be the sanctuary with the seating and the chancel. There would be two um, instrument or storage rooms. Um, a foyer, a, the men's restroom shown here on the bottom, the women's on the top, and a new office space shown here in green. These are the proposed front and rear elevations. And the side elevation shown here. The services for the church would um, include Sunday services, Sunday schools, prayer meetings, small and small group sessions. There are currently four staff members. The clients and the number of clients would range varying on the, um, the day and the type of event going on that day. Uh, their business hours would range as well. So they'd be open Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., Saturday, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday, 9.30 to 12.15 p.m. Um, planning staff does recommend adopting resolution number 236125, approving conditional use permit number 2209. Um, I'm here for any questions, and I have the applicant here as well for any questions regarding the project itself. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for that report. Uh, does any uh, member of the Planning Commission have any questions for staff at this time? Not at this time. Okay. All right. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and call forward the applicant. Um, I believe... Uh, is, is Peter Fung here? Please, please come forward. I think you're, or, or are you representing the applicant? Yes, I'm. The, actually, I'm Peter Fung, the applicant. Oh, okay. Project. Welcome. Uh, okay, plan commission chair and um, the um, and the commissioners. I'll be happy to be here tonight presenting the church project. First of all, um, is is uh, the church is really in need of this new sanctuary building to accommodate their worship, uh, you know, as for their, you know, for their members. And, um, and we're very happy that we, the neighboring properties, which I think is an education school, they're very cooperative to share with us the parking because they never use a weekend. 
And mainly our sanctuary building will be used on Sundays uh, for church services. It very occasionally on Saturday if there's a wedding. And we hope there's more weddings. <laughs> so um, anyhow, um, there. So we we um, work on a parking situation and um, and about the classes we have. Usually, maybe Bible study classes and other classes probably at the week uh, the weekends or Saturday evenings or Friday nights program, perhaps for the uh, for the uh, youth and so so forth. So on Sunday, really, um, that's mostly used on that Sunday morning. Because so far, we don't we don't even foresee any activities um, other other than those. Operation hours as stated, yes, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. And perhaps my uh, uh, project designer, Louis, we, uh, do you have anything anything to add to? Uh... My name is Louis Lau, I'm the church member. Because our church is has expansion, so we like to have a new church. But right now the existing building is very old, and then we have more. We, we want more people come to our church, so we have a demolished part of the site, and then we have a new building, make it bigger and more beautiful, and then attract the people, you know, the area, and then people can come and see from the highway, see that the church here, so people come and then join the activity, and then for the worship or of the kid for studying some Bible knowledge or whatever. So I think that is the purple of our church. Thank you. Uh, does any member of the Planning Commission have any questions for the applicant? Oh, the only question that I have. With your parking agreement, it's a case that you are wanting to share your parking as well as be able to use the Northwest College parking lots? Yeah, we have our agreement right now. Yeah, we have our agreement right now, and then... Look like it, for the short term, if they continue this one, we review everything and then we, we, we will sign the contract again. I see. Uh, allow me to clarify. It's a question about reciprocation. Mm -hmm. Because so on the weekdays that the education center, they could use our parking. Okay. Is that something I agree yeah. with? Yes, that's so we have the reciprocating. So they have more parking now. Okay, so it's actually a reciprocal parking agreement. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. I, I just had one quick question. It seems that the parking agreement that's uh, submitted as attachment three, it's just for 36 months. Um, obviously, um, obviously, since you do have a parking shortfall, the only concern that I think I would have about anything is, um, it, it, let's say they, they don't renew at the end of the 36-month time period. Um, w what would your plan be to address the parking shortfall then? Uh, I think from we, we think about this one before. Look like not far away. There are hotel. Hotel there so have a parking. We with like we have. I think our church pastor already not think talk think about this one. And then after that, few years later, if the the agreement we we don't have any more, so we have to think about the hotel parking. Okay. All right. Very well. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll now hear uh, testimony from those in favor. Um, I, I do have one speaker card, David Ang Wong, if you'd like to come forward. Hi, I'm David Ang Wong. I'm the uh, youth worship director at the church. Um, just maybe just give a little bit of background as to why we're doing this now. Um, our churches have actually come together as a merger uh, that happened last year. Um, and so originally the church I was working for, uh, Living Grace Alliance Church, was operating in Hacienda Heights. And um, Grace Alliance Church, which is currently residing in the building here, uh, we decided to join together. Um, and so because of this extra sort of uh, population, we, we found just the need for a much bigger space. Um, and we're, we're hoping that um, our space can become more of a much more of a community area as well. Um, we've always had a recognition of how church is supposed to be something that's integrated in community, um, that's supposed to be a, a presence that works alongside 
uh, other aspects of the neighborhoods that we're in. And we see a lot of potential in West Covina, especially given the ways that um, it's been one of the few neighborhoods in LA County that's actually grown uh, through the pandemic. So it's been pretty interesting to see some of the younger families driving this way. And uh, we just want to be part of that growth as well. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this project? Seeing none, uh, anyone who would like to speak who is opposed to the project? Any neutral? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and open discussion by the commission. Um, any discussion? I'll just let you know, I did um, go into the planning um, office yesterday for clarification on the parking which staff has, has addressed. And also, too, about the parking agreement, one of the things that I asked staff to explore was having the city attorney to review the reciprocal parking agreement. And I had asked that they also look at having it recorded because, again, if properties change hands, we just want it's going to be a case since they're doing new construction. Once they get their CFO, it's not going to be a case where the city is going to come back and say, guess what? We need the parking or we ask you to remove your addition. So solidify it to, instead of a verbal, to a contract, more or less. Yeah, so anyone that may choose to use the property, they'll be aware that there is a reciprocal parking agreement. That's a good idea. The, the only practical question I have is, uh, obviously, what is presented is only a 36-month agreement. So, Correct. So what I'm trying to figure out is... Um, how how would we modify that such that the the recordation of it outside of the the time period from today through let's say 2026 right um how how would we address that i i think that's the the practical consideration can we um there is a condition of approval requiring that the agreement um be re be re renewed prior to the um the expiration um, and and there's also a separate requirement stating that it at any um, at any point w um, that where the agreement cannot be renewed, then they would have to go back to the planning commission so that the planning commission can consider alternative options for for their parking. Would the school be able to operate at full capacity without their parking lot? No. Yes. Yes, they would. Yes. They would. It's it's just that um, at well, okay. So they were approved. The school was approved to operate without their parking lot. Um, however, however, um, it's there seems to be a need for the the school to u utilize their parking so lot they, they for need the employees. An overflow. Um, yes. Okay. So it behooves both parties to make it work. I don't see exactly because it's a problem. It'll help them with the church with their expansion, right? And that condition is, I believe, G. That condition is letter G. So, so Shelby, if, if I I do see that, uh, thank thank you, Joanne. Um, Shelby, so if if we were to entertain a motion that included recordation, it would be including recordation of subsequent renewal agreements as well? Okay, all right. So we did, um, Chair, if I may, sorry. Sure. Um, can you, um, Miriam had revised Condition G to add the requirements for recorda recordation, and the city attorney had um, just consulted with me stating that he will be reviewing the agreement prior to recordation. Okay, thank you. Very well. Okay, that sounds good. Well, they seem like perfect neighbors. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it works. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, do we have a motion? I'll motion to approve conditional use permit number 22-09. Is that, is that with or without the, uh, the modification? With the modification. Okay. All right. With the modification, do we have a second? 
I'd like to second the motion. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Becerra, second by Commissioner Williams. Um, Joanne, would you like to read the uh, resolution number? Before that happens, Chair, if I could just um, I, quick, in response to Commissioner Williams, just a quick minor revision to that condition that's up on there regarding, I just recommend to add the language um, at the end of the underlined section, just um, recorded with the L.A. County Recorder's Office following approval by the city attorney's office. So that's all. And I've already passed that language on. Commissioner so Williams, if, would you like to amend your motion to include that language? Yes, I'd like to amend um, my motion to include the language. Or I, I apologize. Commissioner Becerra, would you like to amend your motion to include that language? I could read it from here. <laughs> uh, he, he, he just stated it orally. I don't believe it's up there. It's, uh, it would be subject to his um, city attorney's approval. City attorney's approval of, of the agreement prior to recordation. Yes, we will amend the motion. Okay, and is there a second to the amended motion? There's a second to okay. the amended motion. Okay, uh, so uh, with the amended motion by uh, Commissioner Becerra, seconded by Commissioner Williams. Joanne, will you read the resolution number and uh, let's do roll call. The resolution number is resolution number 23 Six one two five, and then roll call. Commissioner Williams, aye. Commissioner Hang, aye. Commissioner Becerra, aye. Chair Lewis, aye. Matter passes four zero one. Uh, this matter is final unless appealed to the City Council within ten days. Thank you. All right, there are no uh, non-hearing items, so we'll move on to commissioner reports and miscellaneous items. Uh, does any commissioner have uh, anything they'd like to report or comment on with regard to any item? Oh, I just want to thank the city for giving um, me an opportunity to go to the Planning Commissioner's Academy. I was able to go to the first day, and the uh, information that they gave um, was helpful as far as running um, planning commission meetings and so forth. It seems like in other jurisdictions they've had to deal with perhaps unruly crowds and stuff, and so they gave good advice on how to handle and address those things. All right. Any other reports or comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, Joanne, are there any items to report to the commission? Okay. Um just wanted to um, report that the Planning Commissioners Academy occurred um, at the end of last month, and Commissioners Bas um, Williams, Becerra, and Hang attended the Planning Commissioners Academy, um, and also staff members Jerry Rivera, Maria Machado, and I, um, we attended the, the Planning Commissioners Academy, but not on all the same on the same day we we still maintain coverage within the department so um, and also with forthcoming um, the forthcoming items are for the next two meeting for the next meeting for April 25th is on included in the agenda packet it would be for code amendment 23-02 which is um, appearing again in front of the Planning Commission. This was um, a result of an application that was submitted by um, a business owner. It's for consideration of the sales of beer and wine at service stations. So we had scheduled that one item for the 25th. Um, I do not have anything else to report. Any uh, any council actions you'd like to report? Yes, at the April fourth city council meeting, the city council extended the moratorium on drive-through restaurants for an additional ten months and fifteen days. This was the first extension um, that was granted. Anything else? That is it. All right. All right. Since there's no further business to consider, this meeting is adjourned at. 7.29 p.m. Have a good evening, everyone.